Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Equilinox. In the last episode, we began planting our very first jungle biome. We chose this location over by our second body of water, and there's still plenty of space to use around it too. The jungle is pretty small right now, but there are plenty of plants inside. We actually unlocked the jungle mushrooms, and we unlocked a few of the jungle flowers too. Our trees are what we're waiting on right now. As soon as we have five of these ficus trees growing inside this place, we should be done with the next task on our list. I believe it was this one, the mighty jungle task. So we still need three more to grow, and I guess we might as well just wait. The ficus trees are rather expensive, so it'd probably be a good idea for us to focus on something else while we're waiting for this to truly thrive. I'm pretty sure that all the plants here are pretty happy too. Yeah, it looks like they're doing all right. So I suppose what we could do is just selective breed one of these. I'm not sure if maybe the vine trees are taking over. It looks like plenty of those are growing too. Oh, and we have a tiny little ficus tree right here. All right, so it's probably just not old enough to show up on the task yet. Yeah, let's just leave the jungle to do its business and we'll come back as soon as we see the task pop. So what else could we focus on while we're waiting for our jungle to grow? I know that we have a few more tasks inside our task menu, and I think one of them was also for the berry bushes. Merry berry. So they wanted us to unlock the berry bush and create a suitable area for it to grow in. Then we just need to get five sheep to eat from the berry bush, and I think that's how we unlock the deer in our world too. So maybe that would be a fun thing for us to focus on? We just have to try to figure out how to unlock the berry bush. And I want to say that that has something to do with this tomato plant. Let's see if that's in the evolution tree. Yep, the berry bush is right here. So we need to change our tomato plant over to the pink color and grow it somewhere where it's not a grassland biome. Which unfortunately is easier said than done. But I think right over here? Yeah, this is all completely forest. We made this just for our little boar. So I wonder if we could actually use this to grow the tomato plant too. Well, it likes the grasslands and the woodlands. Let's just check and see if maybe it would grow here. Oh no, a 15% environment. Okay, this is definitely not a good place for us to set it up then. Maybe we could try over here with all of our birds. I'm sure our little sparrows wouldn't mind. We do have quite a bit of grass over here though, so that might be a problem. It does count as a grassland biome. I wonder if that would be too much. It seems as though we need to make sure that there's no trace of the grasslands in here at all. To be honest, the tomato plant seems to be a little bit picky. Maybe we could go over here instead then? We could make a little area that's just a woodland biome. It's not as though there's very much room to work with here anyways. It's right at the edge of the world. So I'm not really sure what else we could place here. Yeah, let's try putting down some buttercups or something. I'm pretty sure that that was the easiest way to spread the woodland biome. And our oregano too. But didn't those need trees? Yeah, we might need to wait for this woodland to take a root before we place anything else in here. For now, the buttercups will do just fine. The biome still isn't the best for this place, but it is getting better. We're at about 40% for a suitable environment. So let's just see if we can place some different types of wooden things inside this area too. Yeah, the oregano I want to say wanted trees. It likes wooden trees around it. And as for the sycamore tree, it just likes herbs. So if we grow these two side by side, then they should be able to survive quite nicely. We'll place our sycamore tree right here, and then the oregano right beside it, and the two of them should spread in no time. The ground is already turning so green here, so we must be doing something right. In fact, let's see if the tomato plants are going to enjoy this area now. It looks like we can place them down. Excellent! About 75%, and I'm sure as the rest of these plants spread, it'll be even better for our little tomato plants too. So we'll place two of them side by side, and then right away, we're going to want to make sure that we change the color over to pink. Hopefully that's not going to be too expensive. Actually, these look like they are quite cheap. Black tomatoes? Oh my gosh, can you imagine? They would look like they're completely rotten. Maybe that would be a good thing for us to place in our no man's land way up in the hills. Another thing to keep the intruders at bay. So we have the tomato plants growing. Let's go take a look at our ficus trees. 
Oh, or the redfish, okay. Is it this little guy right here? He looks pretty red to me, but he must be just a slightly different hue. That purple color again. Oh my gosh, it's even spreading to the water now? I swear, every last thing in this biome is going to be purple before long. It's almost like the magic forest is slowly seeping out from this original grasslands, infecting every last thing that it touches. Our new trees that we found yesterday, these kind of pinkish tall trees, actually kind of remind me of like big cones of cotton candy or something. I think it's pretty fitting next to our sheep too. And you know, we always did want to change their color over to something that suited their job a bit more. As the guardians of the apples, they need to look the part. So pink would probably be an even more fitting color for them now, now that they have all of these pink trees to keep them company. Let's see if that would be cheap enough for us to set up right now. The light pink color is very, very expensive, okay. So just like all of our other sheep, we won't be able to set it up right at the top but we could give them a little tiny boost. Maybe 60,000 points worth of a color change. The slightest tint to show the tall tree's influence. And now back to those ficus trees. Oh, I thought maybe that was our task, but unfortunately it's just for the apple trees instead. So we have two large ficus trees. I think this was a little sapling that we saw before too. And is that another ficus tree growing down here? Excellent, so number four. There should only be one left that we need to wait for. I mean, I guess we could always just plop it into the world, but at the price, it seems like it would probably be better to just let Mother Nature do its thing. And it seems like we're getting a good amount of things done in the meantime, too. So I guess let's take a look at our other tasks. Maybe we could even start one of the ones for the fish as well. The fish mastery task needs quite a few different types of fish in order for us to complete it, but look at that reward. No new types of animals or plants, but plenty of points, and we could use that to change some of our colors up. So we need 20 royal grandmas, 20 neon fish, 20 clownfish, and 10 pike in the world. And to be honest, I don't think that we have a single one of those fish yet. So let's go back to our fish inside this pond and we'll see what we can do with our redfish first. They can become the clownfish, but I'm sure they would need some tropical water in order to do so. They need tropical seaweed, they need a tropical biome. So maybe we'll start placing some redfish over in this large ocean over here. I think that would be a good spot for us to set up the tropical area. Now as for our trout, maybe this is how we can change them into salmon. Okay. Well, that wasn't one of the things that we needed. I wonder if maybe the clownfish would help us more then? Well, let's go ahead and start setting up our redfish over here then. I know that we have a little ecosystem ready, so we might as well bring some fish life to it too. There we go, the redfish should do just fine right here. Oh, and just in time? The mighty jungle task is complete now, so I guess another one of those tiny little ficus tree saplings must have popped up. Yeah, I think we might want to spread these jungle grass tops a little bit further. It does really seem like the jungle is struggling. We have a little bit taking off over here, but without all of those trees, the ground is looking pretty barren. Alright, so let's see what we unlocked by finishing off the mighty jungle. Ah, oh, that's right, our butterflies! That's what we were waiting for! And two tasks too? Catching butterflies and flutter by. So wait, we can actually catch butterflies? Oh, of course, the frogs can catch them. So I guess we'll have to unlock the frogs next. Some species, such as the frog and toad, are able to catch butterflies. Create a habitat where both frogs and butterflies can live together and watch those frogs jump around like crazy trying to catch a tasty bite to eat. So pretty soon our sparrows are actually going to have some friends here in the jungle too. We'll have frogs and we'll have butterflies to place in in just a moment. And as for the other task, the world would be pretty boring without the presence of some creepy crawlies. The first insect you can add into your world is a butterfly. These creatures start off as little caterpillars, but soon grow into glorious, colorful butterflies. Make sure there are plenty of flowers nearby. Alright, so we probably need the flowers for them to eat. And it looks like it's going to unlock us something that would give us the honey, too. I wonder if maybe that's going to give us some bees. So let's focus on this one first and we'll see what we need to place into the world for the butterflies. 
Oh my goodness, look at those gorgeous wings. Can we even change the colors? I wonder if that's just how these are going to look. A very colorful insect which flies around in fields. It can increase the productivity of nearby fruit trees and enjoys flowery areas. A prime target for frogs and toads. Oh my gosh, we have so many places in this world that the butterflies would love. Actually, way over here in the magic forest, this is where we planted down tons of different types of flowers. Do you think maybe we could just drop them here? Yeah, look how many biomes they enjoy. They eat the flowers too, just like we figured. So, let's see if we can plop some down here with our sheep. Oh, they are going to love these butterflies. Oh my gosh! And there's our little caterpillar! So we'll check back in on the caterpillar in just a moment, if we can ever find him again. He is pretty tiny. Well, we placed him over here right next to our main group of sheep, so hopefully we'll be able to find him in a moment. For that matter, it might be a butterfly by the time we return, and I'm sure it'll be much easier for us to pick out that colorful thing then. So let's go ahead and place down some butterflies right here too. It looks like it's a very suitable biome, of course. All of our flowers are over here by the water side, so let's go ahead and place a caterpillar right there. Oh my gosh, how terrifying must this be? All those sparrows swooping through the skies. Do you think they would try to pick off the caterpillar before it gets the chance to grow? I mean, that must look like a pretty tasty morsel for all of these sparrow families, and they sure do have a lot of mouths to feed. Is this still around here? Oh! Oh my gosh, that was so fast. We already have our first butterfly? Oh, that is gorgeous. That is going to look perfect in here with the jungle. So that means we must have our butterfly over here too. We probably could have waited for just another second and we would have seen it already. Oh, look at these things. They are so gorgeous. Now, the developer actually left me a tip back when I was trying to catch all of those sparrows. Apparently, if we hold down the space key, yes, it slows down time. So that makes it much easier for us to catch all these creatures with wings. So yeah, as far as their selective breeding goes, it looks like we can only give them an adjustment in size and disease resistance. No special colors, but that's probably because it looks like they have every color under the rainbow on their wings as it is. Ooh, and we can change them into the bees too, so that probably would be the new task that we're going to receive. So we just needed to have a few butterflies in the world, right? Twelve butterflies in the world? One more ought to do the trick? I wonder if maybe we should place another group somewhere else then? I don't know if there's a cap to the groups of butterflies. Oh, well there we go, that answers my question. We have just enough to complete that task now. So now we have the Honey I'm Home task to take a look at next, and that has to have something to do with the bees. Bees in Aquilinox have the ability to create hive structures and produce honey in them. All you need to do is make sure that there's a good supply of flowers nearby, and the bees will happily work away producing their sweet golden tree. So we have to fill an entire hive with honey, and I'm sure the bees can do that all on their own as soon as we plop them into the world. So what do we need to do? Oh my gosh! To turn one of these butterflies into a bee? That is a lot of butterflies. I think maybe some of them might be sparrows and I'm just getting them mixed up. But oh my goodness, I look away for one second and we have an infestation on our hands. Maybe we do want to unlock the frogs next then. I'm sure the toads could probably take care of a few of these. But as for the bee, we just need to give them a diet of poppy flowers. Do we have the poppies yet? I'm not actually sure. Let's see if we can find them. Nope, the poppies are locked. And we unlock those from the buttercup. Alright, well that shouldn't be too hard. We did literally just place all of those buttercups over by the tomato plants. We should probably check up on those anyways. Oh, looks like they're doing very, very well over here. Oh, excellent, and all of our tomatoes are pink too, or at least these are. Let's make sure that we are selective breeding these, and I'm pretty sure I just saw that we can change this into a berry bush. So go ahead and start evolving that, and then let's start changing the colors of our buttercups over to red. Ooh, wait a second. 
They mean just red, right? Not ruby red? Because look how expensive that is. The poppy needs the red color. Okay, so I'm going to assume that that's just red and not the ruby red way at the bottom. That's going to take some serious points to unlock. So while that's hard at work, let's see what we need to do to unlock the toads too. Or the frogs, I think it was. Yeah, we needed these little frogs, and that actually evolves from the lizards. So if we complete the totally coconuts task, we'll have the lizard to use too. Ooh, and is this a list of all the quests? Yeah, looks like if we finish the woodland biome, that'll unlock rabbit food, totally nuts, the tropics, and then our totally coconuts quest. Oh my goodness, so we have quite a ways to go here. Well, as far as this woodland biome task, we're only missing the elm trees. So maybe that won't be too hard? Ah, and then we'll have access to the guinea pigs too. And it looks like our berry bush is fully done evolving. So our very first berry bush is ready to go. A small bush which regularly produces nutritious red berries. These berries can provide a good source for many little animals. This bush grows well in forest and woodland areas. So it sounds like it's going to be perfectly suited to our apple guardians. They don't like large rocks though, and that might be a little bit more of an issue. I see tiny little rocks here. Tiny stones, but not the large rocks. So should we risk it? Our very first berry plant. I'm a little bit nervous that we're going to end up killing this thing. But let's go ahead and drop it way over here next to our sheep and we'll see how it takes. Not bad. And actually, it looks like all of the dislike species are gone, so I guess it's going to be okay. Now, did it have any preferred species? We do need to keep an eye on that too. Well, it prefers a bit of a lower altitude, but otherwise, I think we're going to be okay here. This should give it plenty of time to spread around as well, and then I'm sure our sheep are going to get quite curious. Oh my gosh, I just noticed. It actually tells us what their diet is on this menu. Oh, I never noticed that before. So Chrissy the sheep has been eating multiple things, not just the apples. But I think it said that Chip the sheep? Was that you? Yeah, he survives solely off of these apples, so he is a little bit more of a suitable apple guardian. And how about you over here? Lulu the sheep likes apples too? Alright, so maybe it won't be so hard for us to tell which one of our sheep are enjoying the berry bushes more. I know we had a little bit of trouble with that with our sparrows too. It was a bit hard to tell when the chickens had eaten enough barley, but now we should have no trouble. So let's see which one of these trees will unlock us the elm tree next. I'd imagine it's probably one of the basic ones. Yep, the oak tree right here should do the trick. So for an elm tree, we just need to place an oak tree in a woodland biome, and that would be incredibly easy for us to do. We have our woodland over here with our sparrows, and of course, at this place that we're working on too. Now, does the oak tree spread any certain type of biome? Because I wouldn't want it to mess up our woodland. It seems like we need to keep some of these biomes secluded from the grassland areas, and it doesn't seem like the oak tree is going to mess that up for us. In fact, it even calls it a woodland tree, so why don't we go ahead and plop one of these down right here, in the middle of all of our sycamore trees, too. Oh, have all of our pink tomato plants actually died off? Oh my gosh, we must have caught them just in the nick of time. Unless maybe they're still growing now, and we just can't see those big delicious fruits on them. I think that was how the ducks tricked us before. Well, let's see if this is big enough for us to just start evolving it straight away. Yeah, we don't even have to wait for the oak tree to grow up. So go ahead and evolve the elm tree for us. And then if we place three of those down in the world, we should have at least one of those tasks checked off our list. Oh no, are our boar having trouble finding food again? You would think it would be easy. It's not as though we don't have plenty of apple trees around here. Maybe we do need to send our berry bushes down a little bit further. I wonder if the boar would appreciate that too. Ah, and Chip the sheep is getting curious. I think he may have munched on those berries. Unfortunately, it says that his diet is still just apples. But you can tell that they like their new snack here. They're all coming by to check out the berries. If the apple trees end up being a bit too distracting for our sheep, I'm sure we could always set them up in some other biome. 
In fact, let's make sure that we know exactly what we need to unlock the deer. Let's see if they need to be in a special biome for that. Yeah, we do actually need to place them in the woodlands. So why don't we see if we can start growing some of these berry bushes back over here, too. Hopefully they're not going to be too expensive. Yeah, I guess that's not that bad. 12,000 points, and we only have to place down one. So go ahead and set that up right here, right next to all of our sycamore trees. And then as soon as that grows, we'll place a herd of sheep over here as well. So we have gotten quite a bit accomplished in this episode. All across the world, too. We have some brand new plants in the woodlands, all of our forests, and our jungle is coming along quite nicely. And we can't forget these gorgeous butterflies. I mean, honestly, we might as well set up these butterflies in every corner of the world. Ooh, hang on a second. Are they actually destroying all of our flowers now? Yeah, we do have quite a few butterflies here. Maybe we don't have enough flowers to keep them sustained. We'd best stick with the jungle flowers, just so we don't risk spreading any different biomes. But as long as these things can survive, I would imagine in the next episode, we should be ready to get to work on our honeybees too. It looks like plenty of our buttercups have spread around with the red color. And that is going to unlock us our poppies next. So in the next episode, both of these new plants should be ready for us to place down, and we can get to work spreading worker bees all across the land. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!